this video is the opinion of the missing truth. Further information has been researched or has been provided by those in connection to this case. News articles and or information that is given or stated by law enforcement, family members, and or social media. Any person or persons is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Life is hard for everyone at some point in time. How does the quote go? Nice guys finish last? Some people may disagree, but Nolan Watson's family is having to watch the horse story of a good guy finishing last unfold right in front of their very eyes. This is Nolan's story through the eyes of strangers. Douglas Nolan Watson, have you heard of him? The odds are you probably have not, because it seems the media picks and chooses who they want to report on, and a central Alabama boy with rumored drug problems seems not to be the media's cup of tea. It seems that when society labels you an addict, it doesn't matter if you are missing or possibly dead. It seems no matter if foul play was involved, you still don't get the same consideration as a so-called non-drug user. What if there was no drug problem, only accusations made by the last person that's seen him alive? In March 2020, it's true, Nolan had hit on hard times. He had previously worked for two years in the Alabama coal mines as an underground miner, but had lost his job around a month before the unimaginable had happened. He first started having vehicle problems, which was his only way to work. It's hard enough getting a ride to work when you work out of town. Eventually, he was let go. Trying to find another job with no car at a time when a lot of people were losing their jobs at the beginning of our COVID epidemic was almost impossible. On March 8, 2020, it has been stated that Nolan and his wife was the only ones that lived at the home on Snowville Bent Road. Nolan's wife's three children did not live with her and Nolan and was not at the home the night of Nolan's disappearance, but there was possibly two house guests visiting the couple that evening. The statement his wife gave authorities about the happenings that night seemed odd to say the least, but according to her statement, at 3.45 a.m., Nolan left his residence on Snowville Bent Road in Dora. It has been stated that she said he was going to walk to the store to get a pack of cigarettes. When she changed it, saying he was going to the abandoned house next door to steal a lawnmower, and he would be only gone for a couple of minutes. She stated she never seen him again. This was in the early hours of a Sunday. She supposedly called law enforcement later on that day to report him missing. It wasn't till Monday, Nolan's brother's wife was scrolling through Facebook and seen someone's post saying that Nolan was missing. After finding out the details, Nolan's brother and his wife drove to Nolan's house, then called law enforcement and made their own missing persons report. It's sad to have to find out on a social media that your brother is missing and no one bothered to call you and tell you. You would think the family would have been the first people she would have called in case he was at their house. She knew his brother often gave Nolan rides because he had no way of going anywhere. It seems the abandoned house he supposedly was going to steal the lawnmower from was very close to Nolan's house, with only a fence dividing the yards. The people that owned the house had passed away, and the family that was overseeing the house had installed security cameras. They pulled the footage, and in disbelief, Nolan had never went to the house that night. He wasn't on the video even walking across the yard. But on the other side of the abandoned house, a few feet out into the woods, they found a belt, a tool belt, and a pack of cigarettes sitting very suspiciously on the ground. None of the items had been thrown down because they were laid out perfectly. Even the pack of cigarettes was set or placed there very neatly. The whole situation seemed staged. It has also been rumored he was wearing gloves that night he disappeared, and one of the gloves was found near Nolan's house, but that has not been confirmed by law enforcement. The houses were very close together, but no one seen or heard anything. 
When the neighbor across the street was questioned, they gave an account about Nolan going over there to the house just hours before he disappeared, wanting to borrow a phone charger, then brought it back immediately because it did not work on his phone. But they seen and heard nothing from him after that. There's so many questions left unanswered. Some say he did suffer from depression, but that's normal for a man that has just lost their job. Suicide did not seem like the answer to his disappearance. He's a country boy and knew the area, so getting lost in the woods seemed unfounded, but was checked anyways, including the nearby wells and other places he could have been hidden. Nolan was nowhere to be found. Imagine your son or brother goes missing, and his loving wife, who was the last person to see him alive, starts seeing another man soon after their disappearance. She was also the one that informed his brother that Nolan had been using drugs, even though he had given him a ride a couple of days prior to his disappearance, and he didn't see anything that suggested he was using. He seemed completely normal. Nolan had been working through the union at the mining company and wasn't on drugs three weeks prior to his disappearance. Maybe someone thought his life insurance was still active. Here are only a few facts and theories of what might have happened. It's been stated that he found out about his wife's infidelity. She did replace him quickly after his disappearance. What about guy number two she was with after his disappearance? The one that was caught on video with her? And it's been said it wasn't a rated G video either. Why would he just leave when he just sold a car and was supposedly going to receive $800 for it just hours after his disappearance? They needed that money badly for rent because it's been stated they were behind on rent. Why would he leave knowing he was about to receive $800 if the rumor about the money is true and we believe it is? But yet, the public has been spoon-fed information about this supposed addiction that he's only had for three weeks by the last person that's seen him alive. Who exactly was these house guests that were hanging around their home at the time of his disappearance? Some think he may have gotten lost in the woods. Others seem to think he may have overdosed and someone got paranoid and dumped his body somewhere. Some even believe he may have walked away from life and started over somewhere else. Others believe, after losing his job and finding out about his wife's infidelity, he may have taken his own life. Then some other people believe all the answers we all have been praying for is locked within the house and his wife. Just remember, law enforcement cannot arrest anyone without proof of foul play. To make this missing person's case turn into a criminal case, someone needs to come forward with information. We cannot stress enough, if you have only a tad of information, or you think you might know something or have seen something, please call Jefferson County Sheriff's Office or 911. Several searches have been performed by Nolan's family and friends over the past 11 months but were unsuccessful in finding any clues leading to his whereabouts or what really happened that evening. EquiSearch Midwest Search and Recovery Team will be conducting a public search for Nolan on March 6, 2021 at 8 o'clock a.m. They are asking for the public's assistance in helping with the searches for Nolan. They need foot searches and ATVs. In a few more days, it'll be one year since his disappearance and no one has come forward with any information to help find him. Nolan is a human being and deserves to be found. Nolan is 30 years old now, but at the time of his disappearance, he was 29. He is 5'10 and weighs 195 pounds. He has brown hair and green eyes. He was wearing work pants, possibly with reflectors on them. It is unclear if the reflectors were cut off from his pants. We have seen nothing to confirm if they were or were not from law enforcement or family, and he was also wearing a camouflage hoodie, blue coal miner hat, and a heavy made coal miner boots. Distinctive features are a tattoo, a red and black skull joker on his right bicep, social security number on his left bicep, a lady walking a pit bull on his right forearm. 
Please, if anyone has information about Nolan's disappearance, even if it seems insignificant, please call Jefferson County Sheriff's Office at 205-731-2864 or call 911. Nolan's case number is 2020-0002. The administrators of the Missing Truth is sending Nolan and his family prayers and healing energy. May peace be with you all. For further updates on Nolan's case, subscribe to The Missing Truth to receive notifications. Like us and leave us a comment. If you have a family member or a friend that is missing and you feel their case has not received enough exposure, please contact us by email at themissingtruth1 at gmail.com or you can send us a private message on our Facebook page. Follow our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, join our private Facebook group, and follow us on TikTok and Instagram. Always remember, some sort of truth remains in a lie. Have a good night.